Imagine you're sitting in coach on a flight. You just click into your seatbelt and the pilot gets on the intercom and tells you that the skies are clear and things are looking good for a peaceful ride to your destination. Takeoff is smooth. You lean your chair back and turn on the born identity and snuggle in for the trip. 46 minutes in with no warning, a chain of explosions rip through the plane and shred it to pieces. There isn't much scarier than the idea of dying in a plane crash. I know for myself, I tense up and dig my fingers into the side of a chair or knee of the unfortunate person next to me if there's even the slightest tremor in my flights. But unfortunately, plane crashes happen and usually nobody survives. But on JAT Yugoslav Airlines flight 367, one stewardess did. On this episode of Vivid Crackle, we're talking about Vesna Volovic, the woman who holds the Guinness World Record for surviving the highest fall without a parachute. It happened on January 6, 1972. Vesna was only 23 years old and had joined JAT Airlines just eight months earlier in 1971. Her desire to become an airline hostess sprung from the longing to see the world, especially London. She had seen one of her friends in the stewardess uniform and thought, why shouldn't I be an air hostess? I could go to London once a month. There was one small hitch that she had to constantly keep an eye on. She had a lifelong history of low blood pressure and knew that medically she risked passing out in flights. When she went for her initial medical examination to become a stewardess, she pounded multiple cups of coffee in order to raise her blood pressure so that she would pass. And it worked. She got the job. She loved her job, and it seemed like she had a long and fruitful career ahead of her. However, on Wednesday, January 26, 1972, Vesna was supposed to have the day off, but the airline got her confused with another stewardess with the same first name. So instead of spending the day in pajamas and watching the new hit show, MASH, she found herself on the flight that would change the entire trajectory of her life. Flight 367 was scheduled for two stopovers on its way from Stockholm to Belgrade. The first was Copenhagen, Denmark, which is where Vesna boarded as part of the secondary cabin crew. There were no indications that anything was wrong. There were no unruly or suspicious passengers. The crew seemed fresh. And aside from being called in unexpectedly, Vesna was ready to go. She greeted the new passengers that boarded and the flight took off for its second stopover. Vesna went about her normal duty until 4.01 p.m., just 46 minutes into the flight. Before anyone could react, an explosion came from the luggage compartment of the plane. In a flash, the cabin depressurized and holes began to open up on the sides. Over the sound of raging wind coming from the outside, the 28 passengers and crew screamed and shrieked for help. But as the words came out of their mouths, they were ripped from their seats and from the aisles and flung out into the open air, never to be seen again. Vesna had been standing next to a service cart when the initial blast hit, and the force of the explosion hit the cart, which then pushed Vesna and launched both of them into the tail of the plane's fuselage and pinned her there. As the plane lurched and hurtled toward the earth, Vesna lost consciousness. The plane, shattered and ragged, rained shreds of metal for several miles as it shrieked towards the earth. It broke into three main parts, and the piece where Vesna was trapped against all odds landed at a perfect angle in thick snow near a small village in Czechoslovakia. As the evening settled in, a local villager by the name of Bruno Honke heard screams echoing through the trees on a nearby hill. He followed the screams until he came to the wreckage of Flight 367. He knew it wasn't possible for anyone to be alive, but the screams continued piercing from the rubble. So Bruno picked his way through the twisted, smoking metal, and there she was. A blonde woman wearing a turquoise stewardess uniform with no shoes and covered in blood. Vesna's body was a mess. Both of her legs were broken, her pelvis was broken, three of her vertebrae were shattered, and her spine was permanently twisted. She had several broken ribs and a cracked skull, but she was alive. If the miracles of surviving an explosion and then a plane crash wasn't enough, one more was in store for Vesna. As it turned out, Bruno was a former World War II medic 
who had experience with just this sort of trauma. He kept Vesna alive. Doctors would later determine that another one of the stars perfectly aligning for Vesna was her lifelong battle against low blood pressure. It was that very issue that caused her to pass out quickly in the plane and was the only reason why her heart didn't explode upon impact with the ground. Bruno got to work on Vesna and sent for help. When Vesna arrived at the hospital, she was in a coma. Her brain had hemorrhaged, and the doctors had no expectation that she could possibly survive after everything she had been through. But Vesna hadn't come that far to die in the hospital. It took a few days to recover, but she woke up. And when she did, she had total amnesia, unable to remember anything past greeting the new passengers as they boarded the plane. Her first memory after that was waking up to see her parents in her hospital room. And the first thing Vesna asked for when she woke up? A cigarette. Classic Vesna. The doctor said that most likely with the extent of the damage to Vesna's body, she would most likely never walk again, to which I assume she must have just laughed at. At that point, everyone should have known you don't ever tell Vesna what she can't do because she made the doctors eat those words when 10 months later she was back on her feet with nothing more than a limp from her twisted spine. You would also think that Vesna would have done the normal human thing and gone to look for a safe on the ground job, like a simple garbage gardener or even going the exact opposite direction and working like in the ocean. She became such an icon and a hero that she could have done pretty much anything she wanted at that point, but not Vesna. She went right back to working for JAT Airlines and fearlessly continued to fly until her death in 2016 at the age of 66. As for what caused the explosion on Flight 367, no arrests were ever made. But that same day, another bomb went off on a train traveling between Vienna and Zagreb, which injured six people. A Croatian nationalist group called the Ustashe, which was responsible for 128 terrorist attacks against Yugoslavia between the years of 1962 and 1982, called a Swedish newspaper and claimed responsibility for the bombings. Apparently, they had placed a suitcase bomb in the luggage compartment of the plane. As to how they got it there exactly remains a mystery. As Vesna shared more details about what she could remember leading up to the flight, she said that her and some other crew members had noticed a particularly irritable man who had deboarded the plane when she arrived to take her turn on that flight. She believed that this mysterious man had boarded the plane in Stockholm, checked in the bomb suitcase, got off the plane in Copenhagen, rechecked the suitcase bomb, and then left the airport from there. She was never able to identify this man as it was such a quick, though memorable glance, but she remained convinced that it was him. Regardless of the exact individual, it was without a doubt an act of terrorism. While they succeeded in their plans that day, one thing is for sure, they will never forget the name of Vesna Volovic.